Hey everybody, it's Father Joseph. I have a surprise for you. I want to take you behind the altar today and show you what is back there, what goes on back there, kind of some of the things that I do. So why don't you come in and follow me. We're going to take a look at what goes on back here. Now if you notice, the archangels are here on the door. They're the protectors of heaven. And so altar represents heaven. So if you come back here, the first and central part of the altar is the altar table. Excuse me while I take my Kamilovsky off. We always take that off when we enter into the altar. So we always make our prostrations here in front of the altar table because there are some very special things on the altar. I remove the cover and I kiss the gospel book and then the altar table. We also have the cross here and we have on the altar table the tabernacle Inside the tabernacle is the body and blood of Jesus Christ. I make it every Holy Thursday, so coming up very soon, I'm going to be making a new batch. We also have an oil lamp. God says in the Old Testament that an oil lamp is pleasing to Him. So we put that as a way of guarding His body and blood when we're not here. Also, we have a seven-branch candelabra. That's all the way from the Old Testament, and we still have it here. So all these things are on the altar for a reason. The Gospel book is the Word of God. If you look closely at the Gospel, you have two sides, the side of the crucifixion and the side of the resurrection. On Sundays, I keep the side of the resurrection facing up. The rest of the week, I keep the crucifixion side up, except for 40 days after Pascha. Okay, so underneath this is something called the Antimension. The Antimension literally means instead of the table, I'm going to open it up for you so you see what it looks like. This is what I open up before the great entrance on Sundays so that the discos and chalice can sit on here. This is the real altar. Sewn in here is a relic of St. Raphael doesn't have to be St. Raphael, but of any saint. And then this is a sponge, but not any sponge. It's a natural sponge from the sea. We flatten it out and iron it so that we can use it to brush up any crumbs that might be on here. If you notice, we have Jesus Christ's body laid like on Holy Friday, and his mother and St. John the Beloved Theologians, and he's being ministered to by angels. We also have down here the signature of our Metropolitan Joseph. That gives us permission to do these services in his name. All right, so we close this up. We always have to be very careful in the altar. Actually, nobody is allowed to touch the altar table except for the priests and bishops. Not even deacons are supposed to touch the altar. In fact, when the deacon needs something from the altar, like the gospel book, the priest hands it to him. Sometimes I give a special blessing to the subdeacons or altar helpers to help me change the altar cloths because this piece of glass is really heavy. Okay, come on this way. We actually just got this and I'm really excited about it. This is the crucifix and it belongs here in the back of the altar. So you have Jesus Christ nailed to the cross and if you look at the base for a second, you see something kind of scary. Look at that. It's a skull. Why is there a skull on there? Who can remember where Jesus was crucified? If you said Golgotha, you're right. And Golgotha means the place of a skull. So that skull on the bottom of the base represents the skull of Adam. And so Christ's blood, which dripped on the cross, washed away the sins of Adam. Isn't that cool? There's still one more piece missing from this. Hopefully we'll get it for next year. It'll be up there and it'll say, Jesus Christ, King of the Jews, because that was his sentence when he was crucified. And guess what? This cross here is made out of cedar wood, just like the cedar we have in Lebanon. And it was made right here in West Virginia. All right, come on over here to another very important place in the altar. Right here, we have the proscomedi table. Try saying that 10 times quick. <laughs> So we have this beautiful cover that we got from Romania. You see the mystical supper over here. I'm just going to move this over a little bit so you can see what's on the proscopy table. 
to keep things very well covered here because they're very sacred gifts. So we have the chalice. And on here, you see the seraphim. They have six wings. And they're the highest rank of angels along with the cherubim and the thrones. So God's body and blood, which is in the chalice on Sundays, is sitting upon the angels. Again, we have a natural sponge from the ocean or the sea. Then you have the discos. On the discos here, it says in Greek, Lavate phagiate tu soma. That means take, eat, this is my body. So once I cut up the pieces of bread on here, I end up having Christ's body, the Virgin Mary, all the ranks of angels and saints, and then I pray for all the living and departed. So the whole church is on this discos. And then we have the chalice covers that you usually see during the great entrance. And above it goes the star. The star goes over the place where Jesus was born. Hey, Jesus being born and a star over Jesus, that kind of sounds like Christmas. Well, if you look over here, this is the icon of the nativity. Because when I do proskomedi, it's like celebrating Christmas every single time. Now, if you look over here, we have wine. This wine isn't for drinking. It's a special wine made in Greece that's made just for Holy Communion. It's a sweet wine. And with it, I pour into the chalice water. Because if you remember, from Jesus' side came blood and water. Also here I have several prayer lists so I can pray for all my family, friends, and parishioners. Okay, let's come into this room over here. We have a sink in here because the priest always washes his hands at the beginning of every liturgy. And he says a prayer when he does it. And over here we have the closet full of the priest's vestments. On the other side we have Father Scott's vestments and we have the subdeacon's vestments and some of the altar boy stuff put away. So if we come back over this way, we're going to go back to the other side of the altar. Do you remember seeing the cross and the fans and the candles going out for the entrances? Well, that's where they are. We keep them there all year round. Over here, we have holy water all year round also. So on January 6th, when we made this holy water, I made it and we can use it any time of the year. One more thing I want to show you. This is the room that the altar boys do all their stuff in. So again, we have a sink to keep things clean. This is where we cut the holy bread over here. And this is where the sensor is. And we have our charcoal and incense. And if you notice, we have several different types of incense. And we use them at different times of the service. All right. So coming back out here. I'm glad you joined me for this tour of the altar. I really wanted to show you what was back here. Now really, only the clergy are supposed to come back here. Sometimes we have altar boys to help us. But that's only if we need help. It's not really a place to hang out, it's a holy place. So we come here only to do the services. We don't come here to hang out, even to pray, just outside of a service, it's not really proper. We only come here to do the services. So I'm glad I was able to bring you in here virtually to see what goes on back here. The final thing I wanna show you is this is what we use on Holy Friday. It doesn't necessarily belong in the altar, but that's where it is in this church. And this is what we call the epitaphios or the beer. And that's where Jesus Christ, it's like the thing that he laid on right when they took him off the cross. So we see that depiction. Do you remember where else you saw that? That's right, you got it on the Antimension. It's the same kind of picture. So after Pascha, which is what you call, might call Easter, we're going to put this, in, this um, epitaphio right on the altar and celebrate liturgy on top of it. Isn't that cool? There's a lot to know about the church, and I'm happy to teach you. If you have any questions, save them for Ask Abuna next week, and I'll be happy to answer them online. Until then, God bless you.